Hey y'all. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about add-ons and why they're important. An important part to your business. Number one, people love exclusive stuff, right? Just say you're offering, or just say a client asks for your lowest package. But they're going through your service list and they see all these add-ons and they may want a coffee bar. And the best way to sell a coffee bar and a beverage bar is all in the description because nobody wants their guests leaving their event, being sloppy drunk, potentially hurting themselves, right? potentially getting into a bad wreck or hurting somebody else or getting DUI. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that to be the memory of their event. Oh, that's the time I got a DUI. Or that's the time that such and such happened. Nobody wants to remember your event that way. So they'll often opt for the beverage bar, the coffee bar. Now, you will have some clients that will say, well, I can get the beverages myself. When I say beverage bar, I mean water, Coke, ginger ale, um, Sprites, teas, all of that. So the way you sell that add-on, like I said, is all in the description. And once you break it down by price, and I want you guys to start doing that in all of your services is breaking it down by price, like giving them an itemized price list. So they'll see that purchasing it through you is not only better, but cheaper getting it from you. Like they could take, they could go to Sam's and get it themselves, but most people that do parties, they don't really know like the, the, the logistics of things. They don't know. They'll probably go buy two 24 packs of water, right? 48 bottles of water. Now, if they have children at their event, just say for a wedding or something, they have like children at their event. We all know how kids waste. A child will walk up to that beverage bar, especially if it's unattended. They'll walk up to that beverage bar a million times in one night and grab bottles of water all night long and didn't even finish the bottle of water they had before. So that 48 pack of water is going to be gone before the night is over. So when it's time for the adults to leave and get ready to get in their cars, there is no more beverages left because the children done pretty much took over. And that also can happen with grown folks. They can go and get water, they never finish it, and they don't think to take it off the table and take it with them. No, they want to go get them a fresh bottle. But if you only have 48, that can only go to only go so far. Even if you only had like 75 guests, 48 bottles of water ain't going far. Period. So if you put it in your description or your proposal that way, or like I said, in your description, that way, they were like, oh, well, I might as well, you know, go ahead and let them do the beverage bar because you guys know more than they know how much something is going to cost and how long something is going to last. Like a lot of you guys probably watch my, um, my commentary on Instagram when I'll say they wanted me to tell you, you know, the whole thing of, like buying um maybe I'm I am i am not I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm gonna say they will buy they know they have cognac drinkers, right? And just say they have two hundred guests and they buy two one point uh well, I forgot what it was. Is it one liter or it's one point something liter of Hennessy? That's already done hit them in the pocket real hard real hard because i think like a, a 350 now especially here in texas is like 65 dollars so if they buying a liter it's gonna it's gonna cost a pretty penny 
But they're going to cheap out and they only going to buy two. And then they're going to buy all this other liquor that nobody want. Right? They're going to buy Malibu. They're going to buy uh, some type of tequila. And if and then and then in these days it depends on what type of tequila you buy. So because they go out there and buy some some Cuervo. Now people may drink it if they don't have no other choice, but that ain't gonna be their first choice. And if they are true drinkers, they're not just gonna drink anything, right? So that's gonna go out. That's that's gonna go so fast because they don't even they don't they can't calculate the amount of drinks that people will have at that event, which I always say from my experience, people will most likely have in an event, especially with free drinks, probably around three or four. Now, if they some real alcoholics, they're going to probably have more than that. They probably going to have about five or six. Yeah. If they some real drinkers, they're going to have more than three or four. But average, I'll say three to four drinks per person. And if they're having like 150 plus guests, you got to calculate that, right? 150 plus guests, three to four drinks per person. It adds up. It adds up quickly. But if you have add-on packages, this alleviates all of that especially if you're in control of the alcohol right all right and another reason to have add-ons is it's extra money like you guys could do now i'm gonna tell you what i did like what i what, what was my biggest seller for me like my biggest seller was cognac and cigars man I offered that as just a table, and that was my biggest seller. Now, you're like, oh, well, Nikki, you know, how much is the cigars going to cost me? And I, you don't have to go out and buy the most expensive cigars. They're all, like, especially, well, I, at that time, I was in Jackson. Jackson is a city, but not really. Nothing compared to, like, where I'm at now. Not really, but I still could go find discount cigars. And again, if it is free, it may not be their brand. It may not be what they're used to, but they going to smoke it. They going to smoke it. It is what it is. So I would do cognac bars and I would do, um, I guess it's still popular right now, but that was back in 2019. I was doing Duce, Remy, 1738, and Hennessy. And then I would do cigars. And I would set a table up at an event. And they would say, well, I don't really want to a bartender you know it's kind of like a layback kickback type of thing i don't really want you know i don't really want to pay for a bartender but and i would my question would also be like okay so the people that's coming to your event what do they like to do the most and they're like oh well you know they hang out at the cigar shop and they like to you know just chill and barbecue outside because um, I don't know if you guys know, and maybe it may it may just be in Mississippi, but I, I doubt it. In Mississippi, a cigar bar is basically a place where they have a huge homemade grill outside. And they're just barbecuing all night long, right? And then it's BYOB. People are bringing their own things, and that's it. And then they would sell the cigars on the side. So I would cut out the middleman being the cigar man with not really cutting him out because I already had paid him for the cigars. And I would just do it. What I would, I called it a gentleman's table at that time. You probably could call it something else right now. Um, and I would do partial cognac and partial scotch. And I wasn't really expensive on the scotch. 
Cause as if you if you a true bartender, you know Scotch gets up there. So I'm 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 black label all the way. You know, I'm Johnny Walker Black Label all the way because that was the cheapest uh, scotch I could get. It wasn't the cheapest one I could get, but I didn't want to get something that was so cheap. They were like, ugh. You know, I don't want that. Like a mix of something. I don't want that. But I would always go with the Black Label Johnny Walker. And then I would go to the cigar shop and I would choose different cigars. Probably get maybe 40 cigars. And then I would pair that with either cognac or scotch. And I would come out to an event and I would set the table up that way. And the table would just be, when I got back to pick up my things, the table would be empty. Empty. And they loved it. So that was one add-on. I tried it one time. I did like a test run on it. Cause I didn't really know exactly how it would work out. So I did a test run. Now my first test run was awesome. Awesome. Like the first time I did it, the girl that was hosting the event, she called me back and she was like, do you have extra cigars? Do you have extra, you know, scotch, cognac or whatever. And I always keep extra on hand just in case. Even if I wasn't going to use it for that particular event, I had it for the next event. Because I found if I bought so many from a company, they give me a big old discount. And like I said, by me already being in that world, working in the bar scene, you know, we all share our customers. So I did get probably a better discount because of that. So I use that to my advantage. And my cognac and my scotch bars, scotch, and what I, like I say, what I call my gentleman bars did so, so good. And the, the crazy thing about it is I never had to even be in the building. All I did was come set it up, make it look cute. And I went home. Then I come back four hours later and I pick up my things and I'm gone. That's it. And I made so much money doing that. So much money doing that. So I created an add-on. And that was that was real good. That was like the first like I told you, the first time I started, I didn't really package it as a service. It was just something I was trying. Because in Jackson, I noticed that cigar joints were popping up everywhere it was very very popular so why not get in on that so i got in on it right now after that i introduced like the margarita bar because the margaritas are very popular and i did spend a little time in a mexican restaurant i bartended there and i saw at that point i'm not even gonna lie to y'all like, I only thought the only margarita was like a lime margarita. That was it. Like, just a regular margarita. But when I got in the Mexican restaurant, I noticed they have all type of margaritas. Strawberry, mango, you name it, they had it. So then I started offering a margarita bar. Then uh, a mimosa bar. And now the mimosa bar came from on the off season. I worked football Sundays during football season. So I didn't have time to do anything on Sundays during football season. I had to be to work at 12 o'clock. So I had I, I couldn't do anything. But on the off season, me and my friends would always go to brunch on Sundays before I went to work. And we, I would always order different type of mimosas. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, this is, I could do this for, for my clients. So I started um, offering mimosa bars. They sold like hotcakes because I could do mimosa bars at like baby showers, um, uh, bridal showers. Like it, I was killing it, but... And then the thing about that was, I was doing mimosa bars 
and I was at work at the bar. I would just get up a little bit earlier. I would pack everything up on Friday night, get up a little bit earlier on Saturday, go set up at the events and go to work. When I got off at seven, I would go back to the events and pick up my stuff. So not only was I making my bar money from the actual bar, I was making money from my add-ons. What I never had to physically be, be behind the bar. Ever. And I remember somebody asked me about a daiquiri bar. I could have I could have done a daiquiri bar, but me personally, I hate frozen drinks if I have to make them. I hate it. I'm not like the machines are stupid expensive. Even if you cheaped out and got the cheapest machine you could, you're going to have more problems with it. You might as well go and get the, the good stuff. You know, if, you, if you're going to do it as a business, I would advise you don't cheap out on the daiquiri um, station because it freezes up. It, it's a whole mess. A whole mess. But I noticed that my cognac and my scotch bars did really good. My margarita bars did really good. My mimosa bars did really good. And all these were, were just add-ons. I made it basically, what, a la carte? That's it. And I made so much money. So much money off doing that. So don't sleep on the add-ons. And like I said, again, with the add-ons, depending on what you're doing, you got money coming in when you don't physically have to stand behind a bar and serve. So what did I do? I went to Amazon and I invested in a bunch of crafts. I invested in a bunch of um the fountain things and I would go and I would set it up. Now, if I couldn't do like, it got so busy for me where I was setting up like four on a Saturday. So, of course, I had to get other people to help me do this, which was fine because I was making so much money doing it. So, if you are not doing add-ons, do add-ons. And then I think the final add-on I had was a martini bar. Man, that shit went bonkers. Bonkers. A martini bar? Bonkers bonkers like people could make their own dirty martini apple martini cosmo peach mart and then i came up with like every type of flavor it was anything that i could make into a syrup at my house that was the base of a martini and then tito's here in mississippi it's cheap here too not mississippi in texas it's cheap here too but it was really cheap in Mississippi. And people preferred Tito's. So that was a good thing. And then we had another vodka, um, Cats. I think it was called Cats. And that was um, derived from Mississippi. So it was cheap also. So I didn't have to spend a lot of money on vodka. And that's how I did it. Now, for you guys that's wondering about, oh my God, you know, I can't really buy the liquor and do this. Okay. Slim some money off the price and have the client purchase the alcohol and bring it home and pre-mix everything. That's what I did. So if you are not doing add-ons, I suggest that you get to doing some add-ons. Because you could be working another event and still just say you got one event on a Saturday. But not really. Because if you're doing add-ons, you're doing these tables and you're doing like four or five tables for that day, plus the events you got, that's six streams of income for one day. That's how I, and, and, and transparency, that's how I really got to six figures. That's how I really got to it. Providing my services and not even being there. That's how I really got to the money. All right, guys, y'all know the drill. If you have a question, you have a concern, my number is at the top. My email is at the top. 
if you uh, if you can't reach me, which you probably always can reach me, but if you just want opinions of people that's actually in the mobile bartending business now, because I'm not, I'm just teaching, go to the Facebook group, ask your questions, put it out there, and let's go. All right, I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out.